Welcome back to Educator.com's English Grammar course. This lesson is on pronoun agreement and reference. Let's get started. All right, we're going to begin with a brief review of the kinds of pronouns that you find in English, just to make sure you haven't forgotten anything. Then we're going to look at pronoun agreement, how to make sure your pronouns agree with the nouns that they're replacing. We're going to look at compound antecedents, collective and other singular nouns, indefinite pronouns, and generic nouns. Then we're going to look at unclear references, where you use a pronoun and people aren't really sure what it's replacing. Uh, we're going to look specifically at ambiguous reference, so, you know, it could be this or it could be that. Uh, vague antecedents, where it's just so fuzzy you have no idea. A and overly broad reference. And then we're going to do some practice. All right, just to review, pronouns take the place of nouns in English. They stand in for them. Personal pronouns refer to people. I, me, he, she, him, all that good stuff. Possessive pronouns indicate ownership. Mine, your, his. Reflexive pronouns indicate that the person performing an action is also receiving it. You may remember these are the self pronouns. Myself, yourself, herself. Relative pronouns introduce subordinate clauses. So we're looking at that and which and that whole family. Demonstrative pronouns point to specific nouns. This, that. These, those. Indefinite pronouns refer to nonspecific people or things. Somebody, anybody, everyone, all that good stuff. And interrogative pronouns introduce questions. Who, what, when, where, why. Pronouns do the job of nouns except for possessive pronouns, which do the job of adjectives. So he is my friend. He is a personal pronoun. And my is a possessive pronoun. That dog is hers, possessive again. Several children have the chicken pox, and, uh, where it's functioning as an adjective, not a pronoun. And there are several left. There it is functioning as a pronoun. It's replacing something else. There are several somethings left. So some pronouns can do the job of adjectives temporarily, but they kind of stop being pronouns at that point. All right. Pronoun agreement. Pronouns must agree in number, person, and gender with their antecedents. Now, remember, number uh, would be singular or plural. So if you have a singular noun, you have to replace it with a singular pronoun. Gender, if you have a male noun, you have to uh, replace it with a male pronoun. And person, first person, second person, third person, you have to get that right. An antecedent, just in case you haven't run into the word before, is what a pronoun replaces or refers to. So. It is correct to say, Joe parked his car at the curb. It is incorrect to say, Joe parked her car at the curb. Joe is, in English, traditionally a man's name. So assuming that we don't have anything really interesting going on, Joe would require a male pronoun. So her car would not be correct. It would also be incorrect to say, Joe parked their car at the curb, because there's only one of Joe. All right, see if you can find the antecedent for each of the pronouns in these sentences. Mia was the first vegetarian in her family. I thought I'd left my keys here, but now I can't find them. Pass me the folder that has a big coffee stain on the cover. Take a good look. Pause the video if you need to. All right. Mia was the first vegetarian in her family. Her is taking the place of Mia. I thought I'd left my keys here, but now I can't find them. Them is taking the place of keys and pass me the folder that has a big coffee stain on the cover. That is taking the place of folder. Otherwise, you'd just be repeating yourself all the time. Mia was the first vegetarian in Mia's family. I thought I'd left my keys here, but now I can't find my keys. And it goes on and on like that. So you see the necessity of pronouns. All right, see if you can figure out the correct pronoun for each of these sentences. Remember, it ha they have to agree in number, person, and gender. Ice skaters practice either its or their routines for hours each day. As Americans, you or we celebrate July 4th as the birth of your or our nation. I am impressed by Luann's ability to control her or my temper. Take a good look. Pause the video if you need to. And here we are. Ice skaters practice their routines for hours each day. Our antecedent here is ice skaters. So we need a third person plural uh, pronoun. As Americans, we, taking the place of Americans, celebrate July 4th as the birth of our nation. 
Now, we and R are correct in this case because it was an American who wrote these sen uh, this sentence. If you are speaking to Americans and are not yourself an American, then you would say, as Americans, you celebrate July 4th as the birthplace of your nation. So this one goes out on a bit of a limb, but again, you've probably picked up from my accent that I'm an American. I am impressed by Luann's ability to control her temper. Her is standing in for Luann, so we need a third person fem feminine singular pronoun. All right, compound antecedents. What do you do when you have more than one antecedent? Like subjects, antecedents can be single or compound. So we have the sentence, I love my dog. I is our antecedent, there's only one of me, so I love my dog. However, Toby and I, if we have a dog together, we love our dog. We have a compound antecedent, so we get a plural pronoun. All right. At least usually. If a compound antecedent is connected by and, the pronoun is plural. Note that, they also, note that it also gets a plural verb in these cases. LJ and Elliot have finished their homework. Our antecedents are LJ and Elliot. There's two of them, obviously. So we get the, the plural pronoun there. The house and garage both have cracks in their foundation. Once again, house and garage, compound antecedent, so we get a plural pronoun. Now things get a little more complicated if your compound antecedent is connected by or or nor. Now if you have an or or nor situation and both of these antecedents are singular, then the pronoun is still singular. Note that it gets a singular verb. Now the way to think about this is if you have a compound antecedent, neither LJ nor Elliot has finished his homework. Think of it as LJ has not finished his homework. Neither has Elliot finished his homework. You'd use a singular pronoun and a singular verb. Neither the house nor the garage has a crack in its foundation. Now, here's a real problem. If one antecedent is female and the other is male, the, or, the sentence has to be rewritten. Unfortunately, English does not have a third person singular gender neutral pronoun that you can use for human beings. We have it but it's extremely rude to use it for people. So if you have a situation where you have both a male and a female antecedent and you have to use a personal pronoun, rewrite the sentence. So it is incorrect to say neither LJ nor Magdalena has finished his work. Well, you can't use his for Magdalena because not a guy. Incorrect, neither LJ nor Magdalena have finished their work. It's a nor situation, so you can't use a plural pronoun. It has to be singular. So you rewrite the sentence. Both LJ and Magdalena still have to do their homework. Conveys the same information, but now you've got the and in there, so you're entitled to a plural pronoun. And we do have a uh, gender neutral plural pronoun. Or you could say, neither LJ nor Magdalena has finished working and avoid the whole pronoun mess altogether. All right, if the compound antecedent is connected by or or nor, the pronoun must agree with the nearest antecedent. Now this, of course, assumes that we don't have a gender issue, which we just covered. Neither LJ nor his sisters have finished their homework. Now I know I just said you can't use their in a mixed gender situation, but their is actually replacing sisters, which is plural, so we can get away with it. Aren't we sneaky and clever? Neither the twins nor LJ has finished his homework. This would assume that the twins are both male. All right, see if you can find the correct word for each sentence. The penguins and the walrus have had either its or their breakfasts. Neither the walrus nor the penguins have had its or their breakfast. Has Maria or Arnold fed his, her, their, or the animals yet? Take a good look, pause the video if you need to. And here we are, the penguins and the walrus have had their breakfasts. Your keyword here was and. We have a compound antecedent connected by and, so we can have a plural pronoun. Solves the problem nicely. Neither the walrus nor the penguins have had their breakfast. Your clue here was neither, nor, and penguins. Remember, when you have a neither, nor, and gender isn't an issue, then the number of the antecedent closest to the pronoun determines the number of the pronoun. So penguins is plural, so you get there. And finally, has Maria or Arnold fed the animals yet? Well, we use the instead of a pronoun because Maria is female, Arnold is male, and so we've uh, written ourselves into a corner otherwise. 
All right, what do you do about collective nouns? Well, what are collective nouns? Collective nouns, as you may recall from our lesson on nouns, are singular antecedents. They're nouns that refer to groups, okay? So team, things like that. They're singular antecedents unless the context emphasizes the individual members of the group. So when someone is talking about the team and the team does something as a whole, you use it as a singular antecedent. Uh, you also use this in cases of titles, okay? Like the birds, title of a movie phrases, happily ever after, and singular plurals like physics and news. Now physics is not actually a singular or plural word, it just happens to end in S and look like it's plural. Same for news. You treat all of these things like singular antecedents. So, the class expressed its approval with loud applause. The whole class is doing one thing together so you treat it like a singular noun. The class signed their names on the petition. Well that's something that people do individually. So now you get a plural pronoun to replace class. Delivering pizza isn't glamorous, but it pays the bills. Okay, that's a gerund phrase. So we treat it like a singular noun, a single activity, and we get it. And physics is fun, but it is also difficult. Once again, we get it because physics is a singular. See if you can find the correct word for each of these sentences. The committee will announce its or their selection tomorrow. I admit the news is bad, but it or they could be worse. The team has its or have their final playoff game Thursday. Take a good look. Pause the video if you need to. All right, the committee will announce its selection tomorrow. The committee did something as a single body, so it becomes a singular noun. I admit the news is bad, but it could be worse. Remember, news ends with S, but it's always singular. And the team has its final playoff game Thursday. We're talking about the team playing together, not what the individual players do. So it becomes singular, and we use it. All right, indefinite pronouns. These indefinite pronouns, not all but these, require a singular verb and a singular pronoun. Anybody, anything, anyone, everybody, everyone, everything, nobody, no one, nothing, somebody, someone, something, each, either, and neither. Now, I know what you're thinking. How can everything and everyone and everybody be singular? Well, unfortunately, in English, grammatically, it just is. This is one of those things you just have to memorize. All right, unless you know that everyone referred to is of the same gender, you cannot pick one pronoun gender or the other. So you cannot say, does everyone have their password? Because everyone, as we just saw, is supposed to be singular. So you can't use their. It's plural. It's always plural. It is correct to say, does everyone have his or her password? You can kind of dance around the subject by saying, do all of the students have their passwords? Because that's a collective pronoun uh, that is plural. Or you could say, does every student have a password? and sidestep the pronoun issue entirely. All right, what do you do with generic nouns? A generic noun refers to one or more members of a group in general. So it is incorrect to say a student must work hard if she wants to earn good grades. The generic noun in this case is a student, a member of this group. But because not all students are female, you can't just refer to any random hypothetical student as she. You also can't say a student must work hard if they want to earn good grades because a student is singular, a student. So what do you do? Well, you do this. A student must work hard if he or she wants to earn good grades. This is how we usually solve the problem, although it's a little clunky. You can also make students plural and say students must work hard if they want to earn good grades. They is plural, but now that you've made students plural too, you can get away with it. And finally, you can sidestep the pronoun issue entirely and say a student must work hard to earn good grades. All right, see if you can find the right pronoun to use in each of these sentences. See if you can fix any errors while you're at it. A scientist must be guided by her observations, not her emotions. To be great, an artist must listen to his heart and not his critics. And each of the sculptures have their own unique charm. Take a good look, pause the video if you need to. All right, the antecedent in the first sentence was scientist. A scientist must be guided by observations, not emotions. In this case, we were able to delete the pronouns without meaningfully changing uh, the intent of the sentence, and this got us out of our pronoun trouble. There's 
As far as I know, we don't have a world where every single scientist is female, so we can't use her for everything. But we also don't have a world where every single scientist is male, so we can't use him for everything. To be great, an artist must listen to his or her heart and not the critics. This is another way to solve that problem. We don't know whether the artist is male or female, and since it's a hypothetical artist anyway, there's no way to tell. However, in the last sentence, each of the sculptures has its own unique charm. This enables us to sidestep the gender issue because sculptures are not people. Each is our antecedent. It is supposed to be singular, so we make it its, and the problem is solved. All right, what do you do with unclear references? Well, there are several time, several kinds. Ambiguous references are pronouns that have two or more antecedents. All right, Tyler and Leon are going to his house after school. Well, whose house are we talking about? Someone male, but Tyler and Leon are both male first names, so how do we know whose house they're going to? In these cases, either rewrite the sentence to avoid the need for a pronoun or repeat the correct antecedent. So you'd say, Tyler and Leon are going to Tyler's house after school. That solves the problem nicely. All right, vague references are cases where no antecedent exists. You think there's an antecedent, but there really isn't. After D Dylan finished vacuuming, he put it away. Well, there's our pronoun it, but what does it refer to? It can't refer to Dylan. He's a person, he never gets replaced by it. And there isn't another noun in the sentence they could refer to. In these cases, use the noun instead of the pronoun. Pronouns are very often used to avoid repetition, but if you haven't used the antecedent to start with, you can't possibly be repeating yourself. So, after Dylan finished vacuuming, he put the vacuum away. All right, now we come to overly broad references. Overly broad references when, occur when this, that, which, or it refers to a whole idea or sentence rather than a specific antecedent. Basically, the, uh, the reference is too big. Let's take a look at this. The characters wrestle with matters of race, religion, and free will, and that's what makes the novel great. It kind of makes your head go fuzzy. They do this, they do that, they do that, and all of this makes it great. That's kind of confusing. So, in these cases, make your antecedent specific. The characters wrestle with matters of race, religion, and free will, and that struggle is what makes the novel great. Now you've nailed down what makes the novel great to a very short phrase, that struggle. It's clearer, people understand it, and they'll go on reading your writing without blinking at you. All right, rewrite these sentences to correct any pronoun antecedent errors. The Cobras versus Stingrays should be no contest because they're at the top of their game. Shonda ran into Isabel and she gave her your number. Sammy put some thick logs into the fireplace and it burned brightly for hours. Take a good look, pause the video if you need to, and remember you can, if necessary, rewrite the whole sentence to avoid pronouns. And here we are. The Cobras versus Stingrays should be no contest because the Cobras are at the top of their game. Well, the problem in the original sentence was the Cobras versus Stingrays should be no contest. We didn't know who was at the top of their game, so we said the Cobras are at the top of their game. Shonda ran into Isabel and gave her your number. Okay, now remember, the original problem was Shonda ran into Isabel and she gave her your number. Well, Shonda and Isabel are both female, so we don't know who the she is and we don't know who the her is. But if we remove the she, Shonda ran, is our verb, into Isabel and gave her your number. Well, that means that the subject of the sentence performed both actions. So they both go back to Shonda. And in that case, her must refer to Isabel because, generally speaking, you don't run into somebody and then give yourself a number that you already had. And finally, Sammy put some thick logs into the fireplace and the fire burned brightly for hours. Now remember, the original word here was it, and so you had the question, was the fireplace burning for hours? Was Sammy somehow not human and burning for hours? Very confusing. We didn't actually have the antecedent in there, so we added it. The fire. That's all for this lesson. Thank you for watching educator.com.